Hi, and welcome to another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix. And on this week's episode, we're going to be creating some 1541U2 Plus Ultimate Cartridge Tape Adapter Cases. I've had one of these for quite a long time. Um, never had the tape adapter case. So what I wanted to do, rather than it being bare, and this is how they come, just like that. That's all you get with it. They don't come in a case like the Ultimate Cartridge does. It just comes like that. So what I wanted to do is make these cases. So I printed the base and I've printed the top. I don't know whether you can see in there. Not really, it's a bit difficult to see. But literally what I had to do for this one is, well, I'll explain it as I go along. So if you look in that picture, you can see all the bits and pieces that have gone wrong. So if you look at the little black one for first, the, the, full, the full one, what I did there is um, I took it into the editor and I, I put my 8-bit retro refix into it um, and then I brought it back to the 3D printer and started printing it. And then while it was printing I just thought, you know, that looks a little bit small. So I double checked and sure enough it was too small. So I had to come back into the 3D modeling editor and change the settings. So I just copied the size settings from the original print and swapped them over. And I took it back down and started reprinting again. Um, the half blue one that you can see there that's partially printed with a skirt around it. That one goes, started going through. I tried taking some video shots. I'll show you like this one. And I got my camera stuck and it jumped on the belt so it moved it forward so the print would be all off again so I had to stop that again. Um, so we had a few failed prints on there while we were starting to create it. The first one if you can see on that camera on that picture I'll see if I can make it a little bit smaller so you can see. There you go. I, I put retro refix across the top there and YouTube but it was a little bit too small on the font size of it so it was just screwing it all up basically. It just, it just, you couldn't read it, it was just a mess. So I took it back into the editor and, and I edited it again with it with the bigger with the bigger 8-bit retro refix which you can see on the front there now. Trans no, it's not gonna do it, is it? There you are, you can just you can just see it, guy. There you go. So that's what I've done. I was going to go through and do the other Commodore 64 part 2 video but here in the UK we're having a mad heat wave at the moment it's about 30 degrees outside it doesn't sound a lot for you guys if you're over overseas in America and the likes of them warm places but 30 degrees in the UK is very humid so I'm sat in this room doing all these videos and the sweat's just running off me oh well, well it started so I'd only been in the room five minutes yesterday and uh, I, I just I gave up I gave up and come out so I thought I'd do this uh, little case 3d print instead um, and next video I'll move I'll carry on with the part two I wanted to print it to make it look tidier and I think it does if you have a look in that shot now it does look a lot tidier it's really 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 good so I've been wanting a 3d printer for quite a while I just haven't gone and bought one just yet because I thought, you know, that they're a little bit expensive and I don't know whether I'm going to use one enough. So I started looking around and I've got a few Commodore 64 cases that are, that are broken, missing the clips. I don't know if you can see. I'll just move them back there and out of the way. So you can see these clips are broken off here. These are very, very weak. So what I've done is I've pretty printed some of these little brackets that you can get. These are all available on Thingiverse, so all you need to do is just buy a 3D printer, download the file, slice it, and, and put it in there. So these go into there, to give you your clips back at the back of the standoffs. They're a little bit different, so all cases are different. That one's a bit thinner. So I need to do some more that's a little bit thinner than what that is. And basically all that does is, so it stands on there, and it just gives you your little bracket back. 
Sorry about the focus. So that's all I'll let there do. So we're looking around on eBay. And I found like three of, three of these things. Yeah, okay, they were about £10 plus a little bit of postage. And I start thinking, well, how many cases have I got that's broken up like that? And I've probably got about six that need repairs. So if you were looking to buy and repair all them, you'd be looking at around about £60 plus all the postage. So you could potentially up at around about £80. So then I'm looking at these little tape adapters on eBay, the cases. And again, you, you can find them, but they come up rare. You don't really see them that often. It's just when, as and when people put them on. Um, and you see them, and they're normally about £15, £20. Pounds. So I wanted two of them. So you can see already, if I'd have bought two of them, and bought all them clips, I'd have already been at £120. So I decided, um, with me bit of birthday money that I set aside, I decided I were going to get myself um, an Ender. A 3D printer, which I'll pop a picture up there. Over here, could be over here, could be over there. <laughs> we'll pop a picture up here. And it's an Ender 3 uh, version 2. So, what that means on the Ender 3 version 2 is the Ender 3 that first came out didn't have a hot plate, um, it didn't have other things on it, it didn't have a little pocket for a drawer. It doesn't sound much, but it is useful. All them little things are all 3D printable. It didn't have a little knob on the top for the extruder, so you can see whether it's extruding or not, or moving around or not. Again, all them things are available to print, but it all adds to the all, all adds to the cost of the of the Ender. So the, what they think the Ender have done is they've I think they're dropping the Ender three, and they're just going to do the Ender three version two as their base model, which wasn't a lot of money. It was about hundred and eighty pounds, roughly around about that to buy it. So hundred and eighty pounds. Looking at £120 worth of stuff, well, uh, it cost me £60 more to buy a 3D printer. So, it was a no-brainer to me, really. That came. I did a few things. I've done a candelabra with a little hat on. I'm not going to show you them. Um, I've done a little demon skull that stands about so tall. It's about a good 10 inch, 11 inch. Um, I've printed a little octopus with some dangly legs just to get used to the printer. Um, and see what it does and what errors are and how I can fix them if it goes wrong um, So I've spent doing that over the last week or so And yeah, I'm quite impressed with it. I, I'm, I'm very impressed with the with the Ender 3 version 2 as, as a cheap um, 3d printer so if you are thinking about getting into something like that You know, you, know, I, you can't go wrong with little Ender 3 v2 Give it a try. I'm sure you'll love it there's lots of other things we can print. There's the little SX caps. If you have a look in that picture. On the end of the hand carrying handle that go missing, you can do them. Um, there's just hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of 3D models that you can that you can print. Anything that you don't even think about, light switch covers. Um, the more you start looking at these things, things just pop out of your head all over the place. Um, you can create your own if you go into 3D modelling. Um, if you want to make your own case, you can do things like that. So yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. So that's this week's video really, and if you've enjoyed watching this, um, and you are thinking about getting a 3D printer, drop me a comment down at the bottom, I'll have a chat to you about them. Um, and if you've enjoyed the videos so far, Please like, subscribe, and hit that thumbs up button for me. It all helps. I do really appreciate everything that you guys do. Um, I'm hoping the temperature is going to be back down <laughs> at the end of next week, so I can continue with them uh, Commodore 64 repairs and the and the Amiga reshell, the A500. So, yeah, it's been a short one this week. Um, sorry it's not been that informative really, uh, I just wanted to touch base and see what, show you what I've been doing. Um, so, thank you very much for watching another episode of 8 Bit Retro Refix and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!